Welcome to the Christian Church on this Sunday afternoon, August the 10th, 2014. I thank God for another opportunity to preach the gospel and teach the gospel in my own home. But the most important thing is, doesn't matter where it's coming from, what matters is the message that is being delivered. With the help of the Holy Spirit, quickening my spirit to the truth of the Word of God, I can preach and teach the gospel and share it with the rest of those for anyone who wants to hear it, whether they're in this room. We usually have small crowds here. Usually it's my family. Sometimes it's my friend Paul. He brings his wife. And sometimes we have people come through. But it's about the Lord being glorified. Because when I post the video, those who want to go and view it may go to it free of charge and hear the gospel preached. You understand? The gospel is not for sale. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believeth. Whether you're Jew or Gentile or Greek or whatever nationality you're from, no matter what color you are, no matter how old you are, no matter what your social status or economic situation, the gospel can come to you and Jesus can take care of you and no matter what situation you're in if you're piled up in debt don't you know that Jesus Christ can comfort you and help you weather the storm amen God is there to not only deliver us out of storms but he's also there to bring us through the storms Lately, we've been talking about the Word of God. We've been talking about defending the truth of the Word. We've asked those that are corrupting the Word to stop corrupting the Word of God. We know the Bible tells us that despite the warnings, people will continually continue to seduce, continually corrupt the Word, and they will receive the fruit of their doings. They will receive the rewards of their labor on Judgment Day when they receive the reward of destruction, which goes to the wicked. But for those who understand the true word of God, that understand that God has preserved this word, no matter who tries to corrupt or taint the scriptures, God's word is still here, and God's word is still intact, and the truth of the gospel can still be revealed, and the truth of the word of God, whether it's Old or New Testament, can still be understood with the help of the Holy Spirit, amen? And salvation can be yours. You understand? Because of the blood of Christ. See, there's a game show that says this could be yours if the price is right. Well, guess what? When it comes to spiritual things, when it comes to redeeming mankind from its sin, the price was the blood of Jesus Christ being shed at Calvary for our sins. And let me tell you something. Jesus shed his blood for us and didn't charge us a dime. You understand? I want a new heart. I need a new heart more than anybody needs a new car or a new watch or a new house or a new job i need a new heart why because the bible told me my heart was deceitful above all things and desperately wicked so i needed jesus christ to purify my heart by faith in him my heart is being purified every single day being cleansed every single day by the blood of christ amen and so can your heart be cleansed and purified no matter how evil you are. If you are in a place where Jesus can save you, he'll save you. Unless you go too far. We talked about that before. You know, God's not playing. It's not where you can do whatever you want to do and you're going to be able to get saved anytime you want. Wrong. The Bible says no man can come to him except the spirit that is in Jesus draw him. He was referring to the Holy Spirit. So there's a time when God's spirit will not always strive with man. And God will destroy the wicked just like he did in Noah's day. He will do it again in the coming of the Son of Man. 
But we're going to get into the Word of God. The Word of God is pure. If we can go to Psalm 12. Psalm 12. And I'm there, so I'll begin reading. It says, Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. They speak vanity, everyone with his neighbor. With flattering lips and with a double heart do they speak. Verse 3 says, The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaketh proud things. Who have said with your tongue? Who have said with our tongue will we prevail? Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? Verse 5. For the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy, now will I arise, saith the Lord. I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him. Verse 6, key verse. The words of the Lord are pure words. As silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Verse 7, thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Verse 8 says, the wicked walk on every side where the vilest men are exalted. Father, in the name of Jesus, help me to preach this word. Help me to allow your spirit to teach me as I preach that those who listen to this sermon will understand that God's word is forever settled in heaven. And that your eternal word has been purified and set apart forever. No matter what happens, we can trust in your word to bring us through. If we will humble ourselves under your hand, that you may exalt us in due time. And that we trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not unto our own, unto our own understanding. But to acknowledge you in all your ways, Lord. Because you will direct our paths. Help us to trust you and give us ears to give us ears to hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Give us eyes to see what the Spirit is what the Spirit is showing us. Give us a heart to understand what the Spirit is communicating to us through your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Do you understand what this psalm is saying? It's talking about what the wicked are doing. They're flattering people. They're speaking vanity to their neighbor. All this foolish talk and vain conversation that goes on day after day after day where people continually poke their finger in the eye of God with their lifestyle, with their conversation, and with their actions. As we go back and review these verses, you will see exactly what people are doing. Yet no matter what they do, the word of God is still faithful, and God will still deliver his people no matter what they have to go through. Amen? It started off, with a cry, David said, Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. David was in a state of despair. He thought everyone was around him was living wicked. He thought that it didn't profit you anything to be living holy because everybody was doing what was right in their own eyes. David was in despair here. We're living in a time where people seem to be doing whatever they want. And the church seems to not be prevailing against everything that's coming. Why? Because they allowed certain to creep in unawares into the church. 
perverting the word, perverting the Bible, perverting your understanding of scripture, perverting the doctrine of Christ. And so you got a bunch of people living lukewarm, living one minute for God and one minute for the devil. Even though the Bible says in Matthew chapter number six and verse 24, that no man can serve two masters. People are still trying to serve two masters. And it'll never work when it comes to God. God is almighty, all-powerful, and all-knowing. And there's no way you can fool or deceive God. You may be able to trick people. You may be able to conceal your true motives from people. But God understands everything because the Bible says in Hebrews that all things are naked and open unto him. You understand? So God is not deceived or confused about anything you're doing. It doesn't matter if you're praising God with your lips. If your heart is far from him, God knows it. Amen? Amen. And God will judge you if you do not repent. But we see where David was. Remember, David didn't have the Holy Ghost living on the inside of him. He had the presence of the Holy Ghost coming upon him. To allow them to perform mighty acts and mighty miracles, such as the slaying of Goliath. You understand? Such as winning battle after battle after battle. Because God had given him the power to be victorious over his enemies. Amen? Amen. But yet, we see that God is going to come through. But we say, verse 2, it says, They speak vanity, every one with his neighbor. With flattering lips and with a double heart do they speak. That means they're telling you one thing, but they mean something else. And I see that going on in churches. You see pastors acting like they're holy, preaching like they want people to get right with God, and then they go out and do e evil and wicked things that are contrary to the word. They're living a double life, and they're speaking with a double heart. Do you think that God is not requiring you to live right? Because you have the title of a pastor given to you by man, God doesn't need man's validation. When God ordains someone to preach the gospel, they don't have to have a title. They don't have to have a degree in theology. They don't have to have anything but God's approval by his spirit that lives on the inside. Amen? That's why I'm not out seeking titles. I can go and study and do papers and get a degree and get a degree unless of course they don't like the revelation that God has given me I've been in college taking classes and got lower grades than I should because I was talking about Christianity and defending the truth of the gospel amen, amen. you got atheist professors out here that will try to fail you because you're taking a stand for Jesus and rightly dividing the word of truth when they don't want to hear nothing about the Bible. They want to hear about their philosophers and their evolution. They don't want to hear the truth of the gospel. Even now, people want to hear and believe the lies that are being told even in religious seminaries. They're telling lies. They're teaching you a curriculum that sets you up to be twofold more a child of hell than themselves. Jesus said, woe well, unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you compass sea and land to make one proselyte. That means to try to convert someone to Judaism at the time when Jesus was preaching that, but it also represents someone that's trying to convert someone to their faith, but yet when they do, they make them twofold more a child of hell. Why? Because they're living in hypocrisy. And the only thing a hypocrite can do is teach you how to be a hypocrite. Amen? A hypocrite can't teach you to be holy in mind and in spirit and in body. only thing they can teach you is to be wishy-washy. To one minute look like you're spiritual and the next minute look like you're carnal. That's called being double-minded and that's called hypocrisy in the eyes of God. And God said, woe unto the hypocrites. All the hypocrites are going to get is their portion in the lake of fire. Don't be a hypocrite. Amen. Don't have a double heart. Have a heart for God and keep it there. Amen. Verse 3 says, the Lord shall cut off all 
flattery lips and the tongue that speaketh proud things. We're living in an age where people are so proud they can't even admit when they're wrong about something. Even when they've been shown to be wrong. It's one thing to know you're right and be right. It's another thing to think you're right and be wrong about something. And when the truth has revealed unto you, instead of repenting, instead of conforming to the truth, a lot of people won't even admit they're wrong, even if the evidence is clear to the world that they're wrong, mm -hmm. that they're doing wicked. They still won't admit it. They'll blame someone else. Like these pastors, they keep falling into sin and then blaming other people, or they just ignore you when you try to confront them about it. Yeah. But guess what? Whatsoever a man soweth that shall he also reap. You know, be not deceived. God cannot be mocked. And the same way they ignore you when you try to confront them is the same way God will ignore them when they try to tell God about the wonderful things they've done. And Jesus will tell them, I never knew you. That's what they're going to get. See, you reap what you sow. And so you got churches that are being left without pastors and pastors are bouncing like bad checks from one church to another. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And then they think that somehow they're doing the work of God. Jesus said the harlan fleeth when he seeth the wolf coming. You know, but the shepherd will lay down his life for the sheep and they're God's sheep, not man's sheep. Let's keep going. It says the Lord will cut them off. All flattering. Flattering is somebody that's charismatic. Somebody that has the ability to charm the skin off a snake. You understand what I'm saying? But yet God says he's going to cut them off. See, the Antichrist is going to come. He's going to have horns like a lamb, but he's going to speak as a dragon. Dragons come with deceit. Dragons don't always try to scare you. You understand? The serpent that beguiled Eve came with flattering lips. He didn't come saying, eat the, eat of the tree of knowledge or I'll bite you. He didn't say that. He came deceptively. And because of Eve's not understanding the message that Adam gave her, she twisted it and she fell right into the snare of the devil. Don't you know the Bible says that a bishop must not be a novice Otherwise, being lifted up with pride, he'll fall into the condemnation of the devil. You understand? You can't lead people if you don't understand the truth of the word. Amen? And if you understand the truth of the word, you don't need a, a, a degree. And you don't even need anybody to acknowledge you as being a pastor. Your works will speak for themselves. Amen? As God has given me the gift to teach the word of God, my works will speak for myself. I don't have to promote myself. I don't need anybody else to promote me. All I need to do is preach the gospel and tell people, listen to the gospel. Compare what I say to the word of God, and if it lines up, give God the glory. Amen? And thank God that there are people out here that are willing to tell you the truth in a society full of liars where people tell lies every day like you change your clothes people are lying they change their stories one minute they're for God one minute they're against them one minute you know they're in between they're undecided one minute they think everybody's God is God that's called idolatry last I checked so I can't get in these ecumenical settings where people are praying to, praying to Allah and people are praying to Buddha and people are praying to all these different gods and then all of a sudden you're going to pray to Jesus and you think that somehow, somehow all of this stuff's going to blend in? I pray to Jesus no matter what. I pray to the Father no matter what. You understand? I don't need an ecumenical setting to try to win friends and influence people. I don't need a big crowd to cheer me on. All I need is the Holy Ghost in my soul, in my spirit, strengthening my inner man and helping me to bring my body and my soul under subjection. That's why Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter number 9, he said, I'm not as one that beateth the air, you know? He said, but I bring 
my body under subjection. He said, I keep under my body and bring it under subjection so that after I preached to thousands or millions, I myself should not be a castaway. Do you understand? Whether, no matter how big the crowd,